ESPN3 College Basketball comes to you from the Sherman Gymnasium in Jacksonville, Illinois, where the Illinois College Blue Boys take on the pioneers of Grinnell. Good afternoon, everybody, as we welcome you to the broadcast. I'm Wayne Randazzo, outside former UT Chattanooga head men's basketball coach John Schulman. And, John, we finally get to see it today at Grinnell style. We have no idea what we're going to see. I mean, they may put up 170. They put up about 80 the other night. Uh, it's a crazy way to play. It's going to be a really exciting basketball game. And Jack Taylor, the man the offense runs through for Grinnell Taylor at 109 points in one game last Sunday. Guys, he's gone from 109 points last Sunday to three points this last week. But he's averaging 61 points a game. Uh, he's Pistol Pete. He's the D3 Steph Curry. Taylor, of course, the all-time record, 138 points in one game because of this man. The man behind the mask for Grinnell is David Arsenault. That's the mad scientist down there. Look at him. He's sitting on the other bench. He's the one that invented this, and he's the one playing around with this, and it's a crazy way to play. 25th season for Coach Arsenault at Grinnell as we take you through our starting lineups today. Both teams undefeated so far. Grinnell's 3-0, and IC's 2-0. Jaeger, Lemoyne, and there's Jack Taylor in the middle for Grinnell. Cody Olson and Tag Zachary. The starters for the Pioneers at Illinois College, Spencer Campbell, Zeke Light, Nathan Kohler, Chris Mars, and Brandon Berry. Three in the backcourt today for IC. And head coach Mike Worrell in his 18th season as he's really put this program on the map as well, John. He's taken over a program that for 20 seasons had no winning years. And the Blue Power Ranger here today because of what Mike Morell, Mike Worrell has done in the last 18 seasons. A two-time Midwest Conference Coach of the Year and a team that has won a conference championship. It's a, it's a conference game in November. It is crazy, but this game right here is going to affect what happens in March. So besides their style and everything going on, we got a basketball game to play. Jack Taylor waits for the tip. We'll see how many points Taylor can <laughs> rack up today, averaging 61 per game this season. And we are underway in Jacksonville, Illinois. Luke Yeager, the first man to touch the ball for Grinnell. A quick up-tempo offense. They'll take many shots from three-point range, including that one from Taylor that missed. And he hears it immediately from the crowd. Yeah, I don't think that's going to affect him today, Wayne. <laughs> I think he's going to keep on shooting it. On defense, Grinnell with a full-court press that IC tries to break. And they do with a layup from Brandon Berry. Uh, if you're able to break that trap, you're going to get some layups. Uh, and, and within uh, six seconds, they're back scoring that ball again. Jaeger goes straight to the hoop to put Grinnell on the board. And a foul against Grinnell. Cody Olson commits the first foul of the day. And Grinnell will now insert a brand new lineup as they take all five men out and put in five new ones. Jack Taylor, the only man actually that stays on the floor here. So four in, four out. For Grinnell. Wayne, this is when it's really good to be the color guy and not the play-by-play -play guy. So, I mean, you get those guys' names straight immediately. And it's going to happen all day long. Julian Marks enters the game. Nick Curta is in there. Patrick Maher among the new men for Grinnell. Grinnell's going to put relentless pressure on, and they'll give up a layup, and they don't mind, and they're going to get out, and they're going to go back. You'll see a lot of points today as Chris Mars gets on the board for Illinois College. Straight back on the other end. Nice spin move to the basket from Patrick Maher. And it's 4-4 as these two teams will trade baskets like this all day. Back to Chris Mars. Uh, Kohler making a great play. We hadn't talked a whole lot about Kohler. He's a fantastic player from Illinois College. Three-point attempt from Maher is in and out. A rebound pulled down by Zeke Light for Illinois College. A foul against Grinnell. Stuart Howe gets called for the foul. And now new players come in for Grinnell. They'll insert an entirely different lineup. Taylor must be in trouble. He hadn't scored in the first minute, um, 14 seconds. So he must be in trouble. They got to take him out. Taylor's on the bench now in an entire <laughs> new group. These are five different players than any of the nine we've seen so far for Grinnell. And Illinois College running their regular starters, at least for the moment. As you see what Grinnell's doing, they will not allow you to run your offense, period. A steal by Evan Johnson, a junior in this system for Grinnell. Kyle Parker takes the three. It's short. And flying through to grab it, Zeke Light getting the loose ball. Down low, three Barry down. runs into a triple team. Illinois College keeps it alive. Campbell nearly had that one punched out. 
Now the 15-footer from Barry. If you're able to handle those traps, you're going to get a good look in there, getting good looks right now and making them. Top of the key, three. Dylan Bartook connects. Parker, they're counting on Parker. Grinnell's counting on Parker to be the next guy. Putting amazing pressure on uh, Illinois College's defense. And a foul against Parker down underneath the basket. Campbell will go to the free throw line. And John lining up in front of us right here. The line change for Grinnell as they get ready to come in the game. I'm not a hockey guy, but I guess we should have been prepared a little bit for this line change coming in right here. You see the five new players all kneeling in front of the scorer's table as they get ready to come in. And Spencer Campbell hits a free throw. One thing for Illinois College, John, with that free throw from Campbell, they are 36 of 41 from the free throw line this year. You make free throws, you got a chance to win games. You get to the foul line, you got a chance to win games. What's going to be really difficult for Illinois College is matchups now. They just got five brand new guys in there. Who you guarding, how you guarding, what kind of communication you're going to have. And the run and gun is on for Grinnell as Jaeger attacks the baseline. Jack Taylor has the ball now. The only man in NCAA history with two 100-point games, and he has his first bucket in this one. 98 more to go. Wide open underneath the rim. Chris Mars has six points, and they've all come on easy layups. I don't think Illinois College is backing down, though. Wow. <laughs> A layup for Cody Olson, and Grinnell stays with Illinois College. And Grinnell's last game against Wartburg, Wartburg shot nearly 75% from the field and still lost by 10. Uh, it's the amount of possessions you're getting, and they're getting both teams get great looks. They're going to be an unbelievable shooting percentage today. Nice turnaround move from Jaeger, trying to get the bounce, but he can't. Rebound from Brandon Berry. Illinois College pushing. Zeke right from three. The Grinnell's got the black uniforms on, right? <laughs> both teams look like Grinnell out here. Well, these two teams played twice last year, and they both got into triple digits in each game. And Illinois College actually won at Grinnell, 123-114 in a 40-minute game. The booze for Taylor, who takes a three and connects. Like I said, I'm not sure that's going to really affect him. He's a, he's a traveling uh, one-man show anyway. You see the amazing score in the first three minutes, 45 seconds of this game, as that one is knocked out of bounds by Jaeger. Grinnell's going to put all kinds of pressure on, and they're going to give up a couple layups, but then all of a sudden you get worn down by that heat, and then all of a sudden, you know, Illinois College doesn't have that ball. It's off his head. They're just counting on their 14, 15 guys wearing out your 9 or 10 guys. When Grinnell does a line change, sometimes it's a whole new five, sometimes it's four, and Taylor stays on the floor like right now as he gets the ball taken away by Spencer Campbell. Quickly up ahead, Chris Irvin to the hoop. Can't get it to roll, and a rebound for Grinnell. They'll push quickly. The Miami native Julian Marks misses. And another rebound for IC from Chris Irvin. That is impossible to simulate at practice. You get a rebound, they're doubling the rebound. That's impossible. Nobody does that. That's Wide open look for Nathan Kohler. Can't get it to fall. Tip put back is no good. Now Grinnell will run the floor again. Maher looks to make a spin toward the basket. Now Maher slows it down for a moment. Bumps into Kohler. And that will be a foul against Illinois College. A high score early. It's only going to get more uproarious here in Jacksonville. 17-14 over Grinnell. 15-23 left in the first half. You see David Arsenault on the end of the bench. Mike Worrell up doing what a normal coach does. And Coach Arsenault anything but normal. Wayne Randazzo with John Schulman here at Illinois College in Jacksonville. We'll get an up-close look at this Grinnell style. And I see kind of runs the same thing, at least when they go up against Grinnell. They're, they're run and shoot just like the Pioneers are. Yeah, well, I mean, the coach going to be disappointed. It's about 22 on the shot clock, and they haven't got a shot off. They will get one off. He wants one off. He don't want to see 20 on that shot clock. Kyle Parker thought about it, dribbles into the hoop. A nice feed for Aaron Levin. A one-point game as Grinnell runs the full press on every possession. Sometimes it works as Levin picks up the steal. Jack Taylor, the turnaround three. Fighting for the rebound, Spencer Campbell clashing against the glass. Just watching Grinnell, it's... it's
You're going to have to handle double teams. You're going to have to handle that the entire game. Brandon Barry has a pretty jumper. He's shooting 57% from the field. He's hit a couple already. And a call. A violation against Grinnell. Kyle Parker with an illegal dribble. And now here comes a new lineup for the Pioneers. Even after the timeout, 35 seconds, and that's it. The new guys go back out. Well, Illinois College feels good about it right now. You're in great shape. You're up 19 and 16. It hadn't even affected Grinnell. Being down three, they've been down 30 at half and been tied with 10 minutes to go in the game. Coach here was on the phone during the timeout trying to get a neck massage ordered. It's going to be a long one running back and forth, looking right, looking left, as these two teams run for the ball. I used to play some tennis. That's what it is. Great job by Irvin to keep it alive, and Chris Mars with the finish. He's just going to keep that up for about another 30, about another 30 uh, four minutes. <laughs> Jaeger with a charge called against him, pushing off against Kohler. And that's what they have to guard right off the bat. Grinnell put so much pressure on the opposing team's point guard. And the new, the new officiating, freedom of movement, it's really going to be difficult for them to guard them. They got a break there. They got an offensive foul. Illinois College, at least the one thing you have to be concerned about, John, is a three goes up and misses. Mars trying to put back no good. They have to try to run with Grinnell using their regular lineup. They don't have the line shifts in place that the Pioneers do. By the end of this one, kind of figure fatigue will start to be a fact. Well, and that's what Grinnell's figuring. Uh, that's what they're wanting. That's how they play. They're, they're 14, 15 guys going to be better than your 9 or 10 guys. And you're going to play this rat race with them. Well, they play this rat race every single day in practice while no one else does. This, uh, you know, for Illinois College, they get to do this twice a year. Riddell makes their changes, but Jack Taylor stays in the game. Taylor, the junior out of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. He was at UW Lacrosse before he transferred to Grinnell. And became a household name a year ago when he scored 138 points against Faith Baptist Bible College. That was almost a year ago today, November 20th of last year. Taylor takes a lot of shots in a game. He took 108 in that record-setting performance a year ago. He's already taken a whole lot this year, averaging the 61 points per game, as we mentioned, 71 in the opener, and 109 in game two. But John, like you said, only three points in the last game against Wartburg, who clogged them up with double and triple teams. Yeah, he just wanted to prove that, buddy. He was human. I think Coach just wanted to be nice to everybody. I tell you, he's so smart. I mean, right there within the rules, people are going to try to get up in him. He's going to shoot a lot of free throws. Any great score, no doubt, can shoot that ball. But let me tell you, great scores get that daggum foul line, and he's heading that direction right now. That foul was against Campbell. Third team foul against Illinois College. Taylor dribbling against Campbell, gets inside, finds a man open. Now Maher attacks toward the basket. That prefers the long shots, and that one missed from Nick Curta. So Illinois College gets the rebound and pushes ahead. That's Blake Stelsreed with a three-point try from the senior at Maroon Forsyth High School. Illinois College done a great job. They've come out and been very aggressive. A miss for Maher, a close look. If they Illinois College on a 7-0 run. They can break the trap, and then they can go attack. Then you're leaving two or three guys behind. Same thing here. And it's something they don't play against every single day. Jack Taylor ended up with a steal and got stripped. Nice reach in. And a foul call as Adam Varville stuck his hand in and knocked the ball away from Taylor. There you go. If, if you can break the trap, all right, as two guys guard one guy, you don't have enough guys on the floor. So if you get that ball and you can be strong with your ball and pivot and get that ball out of that trap, they're going to get great looks. They just got to make great looks. Grinnell's down eight. That doesn't – still, it's not going to affect them unless they're down eight with about four seconds to go. <laughs> Evan Johnson guarding the inbound. Zeke Light tries to get it in. We've seen John early on here, IC being the aggressor on offense. They expected Grinnell to ring up the points, but Illinois College 
trying to open up a 10-point lead. And Chris Mars with the left hand. He has eight points. Great pass by Zeke there. Great pass. It slowed down a little here. Anytime it slows down, you have to figure that favors I see. Levin was left open, but he misses. Shots not falling early for Grinnell. And every kid out there shoots 100 a day, they'll make them. Stop and pop from Zeke Light. And Illinois College leads by 13. The Blue Boys are on a 12 nothing run. A foul, and the crowd not happy with that ball as that ball was knocked out of bounds. I see on a 12-0 run, and they've opened up a 13-point lead on Grinnell. Nothing run. They've shot the lights out so far. 12 of 18 from the field as they lead Grinnell. 29-16, and we saw during the timeout, Coach, David Arsenal a little bit more upset, a little bit more stern-looking than he was before the game when all seemed right with the world for him. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to remember, I, even though it's, or, you know, November 23rd, this is the conference game. Only four teams out of this league move on to postseason play. So these things are vital. He understands how important this is, Erna. And despite this being the fourth game of the year for Grinnell, the third for Illinois College, this is the Midwest Conference opener as Kyle Parker is at the free throw line for Grinnell. Parker just a freshman, but they're counting on big things. Talking to the coaches this year, they're counting on him. He's just a freshman. When he figures it out, he's going to be really good. He's got athleticism that some of these other guys don't got. And, ability to get by he's got a chance to be a pretty good player there a chicago native from the university of chicago laboratory school and prep school as parker heads off the line change was due while he was at the free throw line so he comes off after he's done full court press from grinnell as you always see justin smith in the game for the first time with the feed to brandon barry barry gets his own rebound Still trying to fight for a third chance and a foul finally called. As it got a little physical underneath. Ryan Davis gets called for that foul. Barry battling down there. Barry's averaging 18 a game. I mean, he's got the ability to score that ball. He's got a nice little mismatch right there with Taylor on Barry. Couldn't take advantage of it. Zachary knocked that one away from Mars. Now Jaeger pushes ahead for Grinnell. Always look for Jack Taylor. Taylor trying to shimmy around Zeke Light. Got to stay down. You got to stay down. You got to just suck it up. If he makes tough threes, he makes tough threes. You got to you got to stay down now. Mars gets the rebound for Illinois College, and this type of game for Grinnell is a little bit different because they're facing a team that knows them pretty well, and Zeke Light. With a three from the corner to give Illinois College their biggest lead yet. They're up by 14. Jaeger shuts it down, goes high off the glass. Grinnell at this point trying to keep pace with the Blue Boys. Not something we expected to see. Uh, Coach talked about earlier, Coach Arsenal talked about earlier, Illinois College is not scared to shoot the basketball against them. Some people are. They're not. And as you can see it, they're not. Some people play keep away against it. Mars gets fouled as Jaeger reaches in. And coach, what we've seen so far, Jack Taylor hasn't had too many shots, and he's missed a couple. What is IC doing to him? You've got to stay down here. You've got to stay down, stay. He got, he just, listen, you can't rage. You just made, he, they got lucky right there. You got to stay down. All he's looking for, all Taylor's looking for is about an inch. You raise an inch, he's got to move. If you just stay down, you take away everything that he's got. The only thing you can't take away is his ability to step back and shoot it from about 27. If they're going to make him from 27 all night, you'll probably just probably go to the Waffle House and hang out. You probably ain't going to get that W anyway. But right there, you cannot put him on the line, and you cannot give up layups. Grinnell is 2 for 10 from three-point range early. Taylor, 2 of 6 from the field, 1 of 4 from three-point land. The rebound after the missed free throw from Nick Curta. Her matched up with Justin Smith, gives it off to the freshman Julian Marks. Now Evan Johnson takes a three. That's too strong. Justin Smith ends up with the rebound. Open underneath, Chris Mars for two. And they're used to giving that up. 
That's, that's hard to give up. They're coming up and trapping. It's going to get back on deep. Myers in a double figures as Maher gets one to drop. Listen, when you're a 6'6 point guard on this level, you can be a pretty daggum good player. Barry breaks through the full court press and gets fouled. As we take a look at Illinois College expanding their lead, that wide open man on the other end. Well, most people defensively on a shot goes up. Most people bring their point guard and get their point guard back to guard the basket transition. Grinnell sends him up to go double it, so they're going to give those things up. And they're, they're okay living with that. That's, that's, uh, that's why Coach Arsenal doesn't have a lot of hair at this moment. <laughs> Brandon Barry hasn't missed a free throw all season. That'll keep some of those hairs in place. <laughs> Listen, Illinois is good. Illinois is old. You, you look beside all those guys, they, they, you got a big SR beside those guys. They're experienced. They've done this before. They, they've played them before. This is not something new for them. This is your first look at the Grinnell style, but we're not seeing it at its best tonight. What are your impressions? Well, it's it's going to, I would say, ask me that after 40 minutes, because I think this type of, of basketball takes a little time to get, you know, just wears you down and wears you down. Listen, they're down 14. They could be up 10 here in about six minutes. And no offense to Faith Baptist Bible College, but that's not the opponent here today for Grinnell. It's a conference rival. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Once you get to conference play, everything changes. Everything changes. Illinois, Coach Morrell knows Grinnell as good as Coach Arsenal knows it. And so everything changes once you get to conference play. They are the two elder statesmen in the Midwest Conference as far as head coaches are concerned. Arsenal in his 25th season, Morrell in his 18th, and for the last 18 years, They've gone head-to-head -head twice a year. And they actually say they like each other, which is pleasant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were talking before the game. It, it was fun to watch. Both kids on both teams talked to opposing coaches. A very good college environment here. You've got a lot more friends in the Southern Conference now that you're out of it, right? <laughs> I'm not sure. I ain't getting any bouquets. I know that. <laughs> Taylor chucks up a three. He hasn't had the shot falling yet today. As Cody Olsen gets the rebound and Levin from three misses. Offensive rebound, kick out for a three. Stephen Curry and Davidson made a living out of that. Very difficult to guard. Marks the freshman. Cuts it down to the baseline to Maher. Maher is the playmaker to get Taylor shots. Taylor takes his own shots. Another miss from Jack Taylor. Levin lost a headband. Had to pick that up and all alone to the hoop. Marty Johnson, the junior, gives Illinois College an 18-point lead. Both Arsenos look a little bewildered on the on the sideline, and a timeout taken by Grinnell as the Blue Crew gets into it here at Illinois College. Uh, once again, you got a. Most of the time, you take a tough shot, it leads to something bad on the other end. You got four red jerseys. You got four black jerseys. One of them picking up a headband. The shooter is not the one that's supposed to get back. As you see Taylor right there, he's not the one that's supposed to get back. Someone else is supposed to get back. Whoever they got designated. But that's why you're going to give up layups, and that's why you're down 18 right now if you're not making shots. This is a Division Three matchup, the Midwest Conference, but a great atmosphere here at Illinois College. The Blue Crew, the student section here in Jacksonville, they've been into it from the get-go. Listen, man, I love, look at those guys. Look. They don't know if this is Duke, North Carolina, or Grinnell, Illinois College. That, that's what college athletics is supposed to be about, and it's a thrill being here. They're having a blast. Uh, I just hope they can stay safe later on tonight if they get a W tonight, because they're going to have a lot of fun. Hang on, lie. You just saw David Arsenault Sr. on the end of the bench for Grinnell. He is the head coach, but it's his son, David Jr., the assistant head coach, that actually runs the sideline for Grinnell. And the older coach, Arsenault, just hangs out. Finally, a three falls for Grinnell. Dylan Bartuch has hit a couple for the Pioneers. And they're trying to come back, now down by 15 on the road against their conference rival. Illinois College shooting 65% from the field. They've opened up a 40-25 lead over Grinnell. As we take a look at the two Arsenos, Coach Arsenault, the head coach, is the father, David Arsenault, Jr., the assistant head coach, the son, and they're trying to get this Pioneer Club back on track. Grinnell only shooting 38% from the field, 3 of 16 
from three-point range, very unlike what we are used to seeing from Grinnell. They do get a steal here. Great. Push it up, a three for Luke Yeager, and that one falls. Remember that play. Hove made a great hustle play. Dove on the floor for a loose ball. Any little thing get y'all get get them started. That's a huge play out of a timeout. A lot of time left, especially with the way Grinnell scores. They're not afraid of double-digit deficits. Nathan Kohler from downtown. He's the leading scorer for Illinois College. He's been quiet so far, but everybody else has picked up the slack around him. Barry's not going to get a whole lot of credit for scoring that ball tonight, but he's doing a great job in the high post. Phenomenal job in the high post. Zachary's the biggest guy on the team for Grinnell. 6'8". He doesn't mind taking a three either, although that one missed. And Evan Johnson gets tied up. And he'll be whistled for the foul, sending Brandon Barry to the free throw line. Every time Illinois College gets trapped, you, you got to have an outlet at the high post. And so Coach Morell is very smart, just sticking Barry at the high post all the time, keeping him up there, because you know they're going to trap all the time. It's spacing shooters around him. So they throw it to the high post, and then all of a sudden, really, you're only playing three on two on the backside. That's why they're getting great, great looks because of that young man at the foul line. He may not score it great today, but he's going to put up some numbers. He's going to be a stat stuffer. Rennell's already in the double bonus. That foul was on Stuart Howe, and he has three already. As Barry connects on both free throws, and the lead back up to 17 for Illinois College. Maher, a nice under look underneath feed. That's Maher taking the three. The senior out of Park Ridge, Illinois. Patrick Maher. There's Barry once again helping to alleviate pressure. Get trapped, he's right there at the high post. Double team comes to Stelzried. He dribbles to the baseline and air balls. Nice move to the hoop for right hand finish from Cody Olson. Not danger zone, they just got to keep on playing here. Full court press from Grinnell. It seems like Illinois College having an easy time breaking through it as Barry misses the jumper. That one's nearly saved. Good effort by Nathan Kohler as Grinnell will change out. A bunch of new players come in, including Jack Taylor, returning to the floor. For those who are seeing the full court press get broken on every possession, what is the point of the full court press, and why does Grinnell so stingy on running? Speed, man, they just want to play fast. They want the tempo to be in their favor all the time. And after a while, it starts wearing people down. You get happy, and all of a sudden, you get a quick look, and, and uh, Lights made a couple threes. They want him to keep on shooting those threes. You see the full court press working this time. And a travel called against IC with Grinnell on an 8 nothing run in a blink of an eye. They've made this a nine-point game. Uh, you're not going to keep. Here's Taylor right there looking you down, getting space, and making a shot. You're not going to get. Listen, the, guy, the guy's got no conscience. A long three from Taylor. That one misses, but a rebound for Grinnell. Most normal guys, they miss a couple. They may pass the next one up. He's going to get in trouble if he passes the next one up. Everybody's got a role in the team. That's his role. Take Zachary, the six foot eight center, hits one from deep in the corner. And suddenly, Grinnell, an 11 0 run. They've made this a six point game. And Wayne, I'm not going to say that I told you so, but I told you so. You know, what, what, what's crazy is they're up 15 and, and, you know, all heck's breaking loose. And then all of a sudden you get two turnovers, you make a couple shots, and it's a six-point game. They're used to that play, and they're used to that. They're used to that. Coach Arsenault has fans everywhere he goes. <laughs> Sometimes he's got to pay them to cheer for him. Listen, this is a traveling, this is a traveling show. They're used to, every time they walk in the gym, they're going to be their opponent's biggest game of that year. I mean, look at this place. This place is sold out today. So they're used to this. They're used to being down. They're used to playing the ebb and flow of the game. Huge swings in point differentials. Ever since the system really started rolling, Grinnell has won five Midwest Conference championships. They've been in the playoffs 11 times. And, John, they've led the nation in scoring at every level 18 of the last 20 years. That's pretty good. That, that's called having an identity. And they've got one. All great teams have one. 
Illinois College trying to break an 11-0 run, but a steal by Cody Olsen all alone to the hoop, and it's a four-point game. Shoot it before you turn it over. And that's what they've been doing, but now they've turned the ball over a few times. And then you shoot it before you turn it over. It's a quick shot, and that's why Grinnell's so successful. Levin hauls down the rebound for Grinnell. Maher goes to the hoop, but can't get it. And Brandon Berry pulls it up for IC. The Blue Boys pushing. Kohler to the baseline. He's fouled. As Levin stuck his hand in, and Kohler will go to the free throw line. Got a lot of talk about Taylor, but... but I'm telling you, Cole is a very, very good point guard. Guys. He's going to have the ball out of his hands an awful lot today. And he is very solid. Just MVP of the tournament, the, the Bill Maris tournament they just played. Uh, a returning all-league guy. A really good player. But, you know, I, we haven't talked about Taylor so much because Kohler didn't score 109 points the other day. Kohler's a senior out of Kiwani, Illinois. He's got to steady the ship for him, but there, it's a, it's a catch-22. You play keep away, you may turn it over. You shoot it quick, that's exactly what Grinnell wants you to do. Illinois College is deadly from the free throw line. Eight for ten in this one. Taylor. Rebound goes to Zeke Light. Illinois College with a six-point lead in the ball. Light goes all the way. Trying to scoop it in. Rebound for Mars. Nice weak side pass. But Chris Irvin can't get it to finish either. Once again, Grinnell gets you out of your comfort zone. And an offensive foul away from the basketball against Evan Johnson. As Light ended up on the floor, and they blame Johnson for it. The last possession they had, Light takes it. 94 feet trying to make a play. I don't, I don't think that's probably what Coach Burrell really wants. Wants Kohler handling that basketball. Just gets you playing in a very uncomfortable pace. Nice pass to Chris Irvin, who had some trouble handling it, but I see keeps the ball. Now Light takes it himself, gets two in the foul. He's a nice kid. He can score that ball. He, he made sure that his hair looked good for the TV game today. <laughs> He's a tough kid. He can really, really score that basketball. It was the first foul against Taylor, who absorbed some contact, but didn't set his feet. First of all, I doubt seriously that they work a whole lot on taking charges in their practice. And so he's kind of out of his comfort zone right there. It's good effort right there, but that wasn't a, that wasn't a charge in 1943. That, that's going to be a block every day, not just because of new rules. Light finishes the old-fashioned three-point play in the lead back to nine for Illinois College. Levin tosses one up. Sometimes they drop. Uh, if you watch that action right there, it's impossible to guard. Belmont beat North Carolina on that same action last weekend. Double team. Mars in trouble. Now it's Mars going back to the hoop off the glass with the left hand. 52-44, 3.35 left in the first half. And a timeout on the floor as Grinnell goes on a 13-0 run and gets right back in it. The Blue Boys' lead is eight. After scoring 109 points last Sunday, that was Jack Taylor's line in the last game Grinnell played against Wartburg. Didn't make a field goal. He had three points on free throw attempts. But Taylor today does have eight points. Three of 11 shooting, two of nine from three-point range. And it's become a very close game with Grinnell at one point down by 17 and now down by only eight. Most people would like to have eight points in the first half, not him. Illinois College came out playing a little zone. Jaeger takes the three. And a foul. I believe Taylor was dropped to the ground as that shot was going up. So I think Taylor will go to the free throw line, either that or they'll just have to get the ball right back. Yeah, it was off the ball. It was a foul off the ball. Doubled right here. Got to stay on the deck. He attracts so much attention, everybody else is going to get good looks. And Taylor did a nice acting job taking that forearm from Come Mars. On. He would never flop. You know that. Come on. That <laughs> Takes the three right off it. And Jack Taylor after taking that foul 
helping Grinnell get the ball back. It's a one possession game. There you got. There you, there you go. And now a traveling call. Grinnell will have a chance to tie or take the lead. You pressure, you pressure. Now the opposing team starting five man is the one bringing up the ball. You know, and that's Kohler's game to do, but it's really difficult to do how Grinnell's playing. Nice job right there, defensively staying down. Once down by 17, Grinnell has come back in this first half to take the lead. Taylor has 14 points, including the last six. Zeke Light, Illinois College right back on top. And the man Zeke over there is keeping a minute. You just got to make uh, enough threes. Taylor goes off the glass, can't finish. Mars gets the rebound. That will get something easy. Kohler had that one taken away. It's out of bounds. It will stay with Illinois College. 219 remaining in this first half. And John, we've seen Grinnell come back from a 17-point deficit to get right back in this game. What's changed for them? Uh, they're making some shots. And Taylor's making shots, and he's attracting some attention. That ball, when that ball goes in that basket, things change a little bit. A foul looks like Levin being called for the hack against Brandon Berry. That'll send Berry back to the free throw line. But they're relentless. They don't, they're not going to freak out being down. They're going to keep on playing, and they think Cream rises to the top. But after 40 minutes, they want to look at the scoreboard. They don't really care about looking at the scoreboard after 20, after 10, after 25. Second foul against Levin. Barry is now 13 for 13 from the free throw line this year. I don't want to jinx my man, but they're hoping by the end of the game he's going to be so exhausted that he goes one for two. <laughs> that, 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 you know, because they're just trying to wear people out. And they played good. Illinois College played really good. They're up four. That's scary. If I'm Coach Morrell, that I would be a little fearful of that. It's impossible to guard. Maher will go to the free throw line. Illinois College at 12 of their first 18 shots. They're still shooting well, but only six of the last 14 have fallen. They, they can say what they want to about Coach, my man, Coach Arsenal down there. Let me just tell you something. He's ahead of his time right there. They've been doing that right there. It's, now, all of a sudden, he got lucky with the rules change, with the rule change right there. You can't guard the point guard coming down and attacking the basket without putting your hands on him. He's going to shoot a lot of free throws. Patrick Maher out of Maine Township High School in the Chicagoland area. Hey, we're going to talk about all the points they score. They, they, they 116 free throws made in the, first, in the first three games, or I think attempted, which is a huge number. They're doing a great job. They're going to shoot a lot of threes, but they're getting to that foul line. Coach Arsenal looks bored when his players are at the free throw line. <laughs> Maher gets the bounce. They both fall, and Grinnell down by two. There's the full court press. That's where the that's, that's where the ball needs to be in the man's hand now. Stelsreed misses the three, but another man left open. As I see resets. Barry at the medium post, at the high post, getting people shots. He's good. Barry gets a rebound that He's time. Good. He'll go to the free throw line. Barry, senior, uh, light, senior. They're, they're all, they're all old experience. So they're not, they're not going to get rattled, and they haven't gotten rattled. Done a nice job. Barry averaged 14 and five last year. He was 84 percent from the free throw line a year ago. It's 100 percent in the early part of this season. That's pretty good. 100 percent. That's pretty good, Wayne. Yeah, 15 tries. <laughs> it's not like he's only been there twice. Say, he's doing it in a lot of areas, too. Been a great passer at the high post. He did a nice job on the offensive glass there. There's his first miss. See, that was your fault, man. I'm blaming that on you. <laughs> I guess, Jinx. Jack Taylor trying to tie the game, and he does. I hate to tell you, that's good D. That ain't bad D. That's good D. Pick your poison. Taylor's a rainmaker. He'll shoot it from wherever he feels. And he's encouraged to do so. Barry was left open. He puts it down with the right hand. He's going to the foul line right here. Yeah, you called it. There he goes. <laughs> that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> you make two or three, you feel the need to press up. That guy ain't no dummy. 
and Zeke Light has a bloody nose. He's going to come off the floor yeah, here. That's, that's one of those bad ones. That's one of those bad ones where, where you foul the guy and you get hurt. That's even worse. Light will go to the locker room a little bit early. A minute 13 left in this first half. He's a tough guy. He'll be back. Stells Reed who committed the foul. It says within the rule, that's freedom of movement. That's the new, that's, a, that's the intern. And uh, within the rules, you can't do it. And, and my man Zeke, I don't think he got called for the foul, but he got the bloody nose. He got an elbow to the face from Taylor. And the juniors at the free throw line here. Look at Taylor's face right there. He is loving playing the game. It takes a special kind of kid, though, to, to know that you're going to be Darth Vader every time you go somewhere, and you have to go up against this crowd every time you take the court. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're scoring 138 points in a game, 109, he's got it. Some guys got it. He's got it. This is a free throw and keeps Illinois College on top. Taylor has 18 points in this first half. Didn't we just say a second ago he had eight? Yes. Like a second ago. Long three, Kohler misses. And Taylor gets the long rebound. Rennell looking for the lead. Levin gives it to him. Nice job right there, Maurer off the break, making a play. Illinois College led by as many as 17. Justin Smith unable to put them back on top, but an over the back call against Brandon Barrett. Attack mode, attack mode, attack mode. And now all of a sudden you're starting to see a little fatigue. You're starting to see some guys on that floor that, that didn't not go play a whole lot for Illinois College. Now all of a sudden you got fatigue, you got Zeke with the bloody nose, and you got guys shooting shots that probably not gonna be shooting those same shots. And now all of a sudden look at the scoreboard. Aaron Levin at the free throw line. Levin might be a coach in the future. Coaches AAU basketball over the summer. This is that free throw and the rebound for Nathan Kohler. If he's coaching, you won't see that lock of hair. You won't see that hair that he's got on his head here in a couple <laughs> years. Shot clock is off. Nice job by Campbell getting rid of it after being tied up and giving an opportunity to Chris Irvin. Illinois needs to get a stop right here. If they can get a stop, because it's important for them to be up at half because they play good basketball. Last possession for Grinnell. Jaeger. A miss, and that's it for the first half. It was a 17-point advantage for Illinois College, but at the very least, after Grinnell came all the way back, despite 18 points from Jake Jack Taylor, Illinois College goes into the locker room with the lead, and the Blue Crew excited about that. 62-61, the Blue Boys on top, both teams draining threes in the first half, and it's Illinois College with a one-point lead. Some games, the final score is 62-61, but that's our halftime score here at Illinois College in Jacksonville. Wayne Randazzo with John Schulman. And, John, we've been very entertained so far in this first half. A lot of shots falling for both teams. Yeah, it's, it's the ebb and flow of the game with these type of teams, with Grinnell, how they play. It's, it's different. You know, it's different. You're not, you don't get down 15-16 and all of a sudden take a lead. Really important for Illinois College to be up at half. So they played good basketball. For them to be down, even if they're just up one, it was really important for them to, to be in that locker room right now in somewhat of a good mood. Jack Taylor, 18 points in the first half. Had some trouble early on getting those shots to fall, but then toward the end of the second half, they're now down by 17 at one point. They come all the way back, and they take the lead. Yeah, I mean, he could really heat it up. He's impossible to guard within the rules of the game right now. Absolutely impossible to guard. But I, on the other side, Light's done a great job. Barry's done a great job keeping them in it. they got to continue to attack. And I'm just sorry, you're going to have to make shots for 20 minutes if you want to beat a Grinnell team. You, you're not going to defend them 
to win the basketball game, you're going to have to score the ball to win this basketball game. And Grinnell's using 15, 16 different players, five at a time. They come in and out. Illinois College has largely had the same seven or eight out there. How much does fatigue set in in the second half? Well, if, if, I'm, a, if I'm Coach Arsenal, I'm going to tell them that fatigue's going to play a huge part, and, and we're going to wear them out. If I'm Coach Worrell, I'm going to tell them very simple, you can rest tomorrow. This is a league game. We have to win. we got to hold serve at, at home. And uh, we've got to take care of our business. You can be tired tomorrow. You're going to have to suck it up. Kohler didn't get in, as involved, but, but that's Grinnell's part and how they play. Well, it was two years ago when Illinois College had the Illinois College with a lead over Grinnell, 62-61 here in Jacksonville in the Sherman Gymnasium. Wayne Rantazzo with John Schulman. And, Coach, two years ago, Illinois College had the collegiate national slam dunk champion, Jacob Tucker, all five foot ten and a half of them winning at the Final Four. Yeah, that's amazing. I actually had one a couple years ago also, Mendogas Catalinas. But what a great experience. Great exposure for Illinois College also. We'll take a look at Jacob Tucker. Now he won the slam dunk title. Five, ten and a half. That looks a little bit like you weighing a little bit if you were out there doing that. Well, I could do that. No, no question. 50 inch vertical, no big deal. Yeah, no, that's the nice thing. When you, when you don't have great size and you can do that, and that's our man, Kohler, right there. You see him in uniform today. He looks younger back there. That was the winning dunk over Nathan Kohler that gave Jacob Tucker the win and the championship belt for the slam dunk title out of little Illinois College here in Jacksonville, the oldest school in the state of Illinois. Illinois College has the lead over Grinnell, 62-61. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half when we come back. These two teams have racked up a lot of points in the first half. Illinois College leading Grinnell, 62-61. Wayne Randazzo with John Schulman here in Jacksonville. We've seen threes galore so far in this game. A lot of back and forth between these two squads. And Jack Taylor, 18 points in the first half, hitting five threes. Right, he's, he's the guy. I mean, he, they go when he goes. And, and you see right here, I mean, he's the ability. With He's got great ball skills. He can get you up in the air. That's why you got to stay down. And then when you stay down, he's going to pull back up and, and knock in a three over you. So then you crowd him, and then he goes by you. You back up, and he makes a three. That's why he can score. He's got to build in for 100. There isn't a whole lot of guys averaging 61 points a game out there this year. And so that's what makes him special. And he's special. Taylor, 5 of 12 from three-point range so far. This one, 6 of 15 from the field. Won't get to 100 points today, most likely. He's got 18, but he is the leading scorer for Grinnell. And as he goes, they go. As we saw early in the first half, his shots weren't falling, and Grinnell fell into a big hole. Well, they did fall in a hole, but remember, they're pressed. They kind of wore down Illinois College, and they got back in the daggum game. And, and that's what Illinois College is mad about right now. They got back in the game because they played really good. Illinois College, what they've got to do is they've got to take advantage of their opportunity. You know, if it's a if it's a three, you're going to shoot a three. But Dad Gummit, they can make layups and they can get layups. And if they can do a great job rebounding the ball, which they did, they're up, I think, a, a plus 16 on the glass. Then they can go get something easy on the other end, and they can leave here one to zero in league play. Second half coming up. Jack Taylor and the Pioneers of Grinnell down by one at Illinois College. Illinois College up on Grinnell, 62-61. As we get closer to the start of the second half here in Jacksonville. And these two teams, conference opponents in the Midwest Conference, they met up twice last year. Jack Taylor at 37 points in a Grinnell loss, 123-114 at Grinnell. And then Grinnell came back here to Jacksonville and beat IC 106-102. Without Taylor, Taylor only played about half the games for Grinnell last year because of an injury. But he's been on fire to start this season, including 109 points last Sunday against Crossroads. They bottle him up a little bit. He has 18 in this one. And for Illinois College, three in double figures, Brandon Barry and Zeke Light, each with 17. You've been very impressed with Barry. Yeah, well, Barry's been the key because Barry's taking care of all the traps. He's taking care of the glass. He's made shots. He's made free throws. Uh, he's got to be exhausted. 
I would say, like I say, every game, the uh, first five minutes, the second half is vital. But with Grinnell, I don't think, I think the, the first 20 minutes <laughs> of the second half, uh, they don't get too far up, they don't get too far down. But Illinois College has got to come out right here and, and show that they're ready to win their first league game of the year. How important was it for Illinois College to get some rest during halftime, having to run back and forth as much as they have today? Yeah, but like I said, this is a conference game, and it's a big game. you got a huge crowd. you got the, the what, the blue, the, the blue crew over there. Uh, the blue crew is going to have to help them, help them get through this deal today. Stoddard is back on the floor for Illinois College. Kohler attacks the baseline and lays it in. And Barry makes that play. Barry makes that play by getting up on the high post and then playing three on two on the backside. A whistle as Maher was fouled on the floor. Maher, Bartuch, Nick Curta, Aaron Levin. Foul in the game for Grinnell. Now Julian Marks about to check in. He'll give Bartuch a break. Well, 18 seconds at the end of the second half. That guy's got to be exhausted. And they're going to change the entire lineup here in about 20 more seconds. Inbound 11. Nice move to the basket. Nice Scoops it in with the left hand. Straight back to their pressing and trapping and getting really aggressive. Double team on Kohler, and he's fouled. Although he was not fouled just to get the other five guys in. Sometimes Grinnell does that. 11, 11 right there. Nice little post. Really, it's a post beat from under OB. It's a nice move, nice left hand. Hopefully, he becomes that good basketball coach. He'll teach all of his guys to use that left hand. <laughs> and to have a hair deal. The five starters <laughs> back in for Grinnell. Including Jack Taylor. Zeke got his nose fixed. He yes. was a big key. He was a big key in the first half making shots. He had 17 points. Barry can't get that one to finish. And Zachary there for the rebound. Light left the game with about a minute to play in the first half because he had a bloody nose. And Evan Johnson with the miss. Mars gets the rebound. Wide open on the other end. Brandon Barry with the jam. Big time play. Big time player. Back on the other end, Jack Taylor ties it. I'm sure Taylor's going to get real discouraged out here. Pace picking up in the second half. We're left off of the first. Rebound put back for Chris Mars. Mars has 16 points. Ability to put that ball in the floor. I think Eleanor College is doing a much better job attacking the basket. Instead of, you know, we talked about settling for threes, and that's fine. But they've done a really good job second half of attacking the basket. Threes go in and out. You get to the rim. Layups most of the time go in. And then you get the other team in foul trouble. Jack Taylor, a 73% free throw shooter so far this year. Coming into today's play, averaging 61 points per game. Misses another free throw. He's one for three from the line today. It's too close, man. He just got to scoot back. Exactly. You, know, you don't get to shoot those a whole lot. Taylor and you do have one thing in common. You've both been guests on late night television. Taylor was on the Jimmy Kimmel show. You were on with Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, we're both not real attractive guys. He, he's a lot better looking than me. I mean, Taylor's <laughs> younger than me, looks better than me. Uh, we, got, we got lucky going to the NCAA tournament. I didn't put up 138 points. That guy's a hero. He's a legend. He's been on Good Morning America, the Today Show. Got tweeted at by LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. That one stolen in the backcourt by Bartuch. And he gives Grinnell the lead. 69-68. Relentless pressure. They're going to call it the layup game against Grinnell. And yeah, pulling around with that ball when that ball goes through the basket. That's a good old trick right there. That I'm sure Coach Arsenal didn't teach him that. Four out that ball, make sure they can get their press set up. Goes down as a foul against Brent Lemoyne. Campbell almost caught that one up, but it went straight to Kohler. Now Barry trying to take a lane to the basket, stops and connects. The big time shot. And that's a tough shot for a big guy off the bounce to make that. That's a tough shot. 
but a big-time shot, and that's what Grinnell makes you do. Play out of your comfort zone. That's a big-time play. Levin draws the double team, trying to get it out to Marks. It was stolen. Kohler is all alone on the other end. He finishes. Illinois College makes layups. This sounds crazy. They can win this basketball game. Maher spins to the hoop. So they will get a bunch of opportunities to shoot it. You can see how we got to 123 total points in the first half. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, a, it's a layup. It's a fast break drill. Mars gets fouled. He was wrapped up by Levin. Like I said, he, Illinois College doing a much better job of attacking, not settling for threes and attacking that basket. Hopefully they can get to that foul line, make a bunch of free throws second half or layups. And you can never relax against Grinnell. Chris Mars hadn't missed a free throw this season until today. Senior out of Sullivan High School in Illinois. So now Grinnell makes another line change, just like a hockey team. You got to get those five out, throw five new ones in. Makes it misery on the other coach, trying to figure out matchups. Guys don't communicate anymore. I was telling Coach Morell yesterday, it'd be better off if guys had cell phones out there and just text each other who they're guarding. <laughs> Long three from Jaeger doesn't fall. Rebound falls into Campbell's lap. Good job right there, passing up a three, and then he, well, that's a good job. That's a good job. Lars can't get the roll. They foul call. against Illinois College. Barry pushing off on the rebound. And he Third did. Foul. He did. It was a little call. was a little late, but he did. But. Uh, Illinois College done a much better job attacking right there. They passed up two threes right there to go attack. Second foul against Barry, third against Illinois College. Illinois College picked up their, their three-quarter court pressure. Tate Zachary hit a three earlier. That one rimmed out. Here's what it's doing. Illinois College is, is trapping Taylor, making him give up the ball. That's how Wartburg had success against Taylor the last time Grinnell played. Turnaround jumper from Brandon Barry. I love Barry. I love, he's the key to the game, man. I love him. Well, that's not a comfortable shot to shoot. Right there, doubling Taylor right there. Double, making him get rid of the ball. You just got to keep him from getting it back. Jack Taylor got about as open of a look as he's had all day. So the short Evan Johnson rebounds it. Jaeger kicks it out. And Zachary makes it a two-point game. Long shots, long misses. Offensive board, you can't give that up. Zachary can shoot that ball. Illinois College trying, at least in their possessions, to slow it down. The senior, Spencer Campbell. Huge shot. Once again, to my man, Mr. Barry. Taylor working against Stelzry. The zone, the zone's helped him a little bit. Oh, wow. Campbell reached in and got a piece of Taylor. And Campbell gets called for the foul. It was a high scoring first half. It's picked up right where it's left off. And Illinois College leads by five. Well, maybe they should have played this game out on the track. It's been nothing short of a track meet early on, a great facility here at Illinois College. That's right outside the gymnasium where the women's basketball team is getting ready for their game today. We have standing room only here at Illinois College for this conference rival matchup, the Midwest Conference opener between Illinois College and Grinnell. And it goes all the way around the entire building where it's standing room only up above the bleacher section. That's what it's supposed to look like. A lot of them here to see this Grinnell style and a three from Julian Marks, the freshman out of Miami. He came all the way from Miami to play college ball in Iowa. Well, everybody wants to go to Iowa from Miami, man. You know that, Wayne. Uh, <laughs> let me just tell you something. Uh, the, the kid made eight threes the other night. Had 26, uh, had 26 and on two. Levin, the putback to tie the game. They can all shoot that ball. 
That's the scary rat race. That's the scary one right there where you play a little too fast and all of a sudden you take a three, probably not what Coach wanted there. We've had a handful of ties today, but Rinell has had very few leads. Levin trying to put them up by three. He missed and a rebound falls back to Bartuch. Brown wanted it over the back foul. Yeah, they got tough right there. That's a tough one. Arks ran into his own teammate, nearly lost the ball. Zone in here, that also helps them save a little legs. Uh, Illinois College zoning and zone majority of the second half. That one rims out. And a foul on the rebound this time. Wow. Against Grinnell, maybe a makeup for the one that wasn't called right. on the last miss. Okay. I, I thought they I thought they'd go the other way with it. No, that was a good call. Third foul against Grinnell. That's the third against Levin. They zone there. Illinois College zone there. You notice that it took, takes Grinnell a little bit longer to get a shot that they want. Saves them a couple, saves them some legs. That's a pretty good job of Coach Burrell. Nice job by Yeager as he knocked that pass out of bounds. It will stay with Illinois College, but that cross court pass doesn't work against the full court press. No, it's great effort right there by Yeager, too. Great effort. All pressing teams want is they want deflections. Anytime you can get deflection, that's a great, that's a great thing. That's a quick time deflection right there. Puts doubt in the offensive team's hand, in, in their head. Brandon Barry thought about it, and from the free throw line, puts Illinois College back on top. Somebody needs to buy him dinner tonight. Barry has 25 points. Jaeger kicks it out to Zachary, and Grinnell back on top. <laughs> you, got, you got six eight on one side, six five on the other side. Everybody shooting big. Jays, a home run pass to Justin Smith, caught it in stride and lays it. I would say it looked like Cutler, but he ain't playing. He's hurt. <laughs> Steal by Nathan Kohler. Kohler put a little Grinnell right there. And a foul called against Kyle Parker. <laughs> Grinnell will make a change as Parker comes off. And a timeout on the floor. Not be a timeout here. Kohler making a big time play, making a big time play. Illinois College right there looks a little bit like Grinnell trapping a little bit in the, in the half court. They changed their D, and I, they've done a great job changing their D. It's just the sad thing is they just they're up on one. It, it, it scores the same. Justin Smith almost ran out of the gym with the ball there. Finally got to the baseline, kicked it back, and Brandon Barry goes through with the left hand. 27 for Barry. He needs to run for mayor after this game. Zoning again. Julian Marks misses from the corner. Maher pulls down the rebound and a foul call. As Maher slid to the ground, he was fouled by Zeke Light. Wayne, it's a strange phenomenon. You think you can't zone a three-point shooting team. You can zone a three-point shooting team. They just think. from life and a foul was called right before the steal. Grinnell not playing as free and easy in the half court because of that zone. In a zone situation, you can't really, you got three guys guarding the ball up there. You can't just take people off the bounce like they were doing in the first half. So Farrell, very nice move on that, on that side. Over the shoulder of Zeke Light on the inbound. Pass all the way up the floor. Barville can't finish. Barry gets fouled. Come on, man. Who do you think would be over there? It's got to be him. I think there's two or three of them out there. Stuart Howe gets called for his fourth foul. It seems like Howe's only been in there two fouls today. Yeah, but most people are going to allow him. They, they're going to save their legs a little bit, not Barry. He comes up, cleans up the mess. Great job. Brandon Barry misses a free throw. Very 
characteristic has missed two today. We talked about that earlier. All of a sudden, I mean, he is playing his guts out. All of a sudden, your legs start going. When your legs go, uh, your shot goes. Hope he can hang in there another 12, 14. We've seen all this intensity, as you mentioned, still 12 <laughs> minutes and change left. There's a lot of basketball to be played. And Illinois College, once again, is playing great. They're up four. You would think they'd be up 14 right now. They're up four. Give credit to Grinnell. Their biggest lead was 17. It evaporated in the first half. Tag Zachary, the six foot eight center, misses from three. And Barry goes down hard. Gets up quickly, and he seems to be okay, but that was quite a spill. Third foul against Evan Johnson. As we watch Brandon Barry go down hard, hopefully he's okay. And Illinois College leading by four. Well, the Blue Crew has even found a blue person to hang out with them today as Illinois College leads 86-82 over Grinnell. Both teams sure to get well above triple digits here today. That's David Arsenault, Jr., the assistant head coach. That's, that stands the sideline for Grinnell. Arsenault Sr. off on the end of the bench. We'll see if my man there, Mr. Barry, needs that time out after he was back there. The guy's been everywhere today. The foul against Evan Johnson puts Grinnell in the bonus, so like, Illinois College will be at the free throw line the like rest that, of the day. He like had scratch on his neck. He don't look like he came out of a war. But that's what conference games are. You just don't expect to play them in November. Yeah, just the third game of the season for Illinois College, the fourth for Grinnell. That's Zachary with a three. Brandon Barry has 30 points and nine rebounds today. It's overshadowed Chris Mars, who has 18 points and nine rebounds. That was Mars going strong to the hoop and had that ball knocked away. This is a chess match going on, really. Coach Worrell stays in that zone. Coach Arsenal puts Taylor in the middle of the zone. So he put him as Barry on the other side and let him be the playmaker in there. Very interesting. Taylor off the floor, a new five in, and Chris Mars after the inbound pass all alone under the weak side of the basket. Those key in, key in conference games. You can't give that up. 20 points for Mars. Bell gets a second chance, and the freshman Marks misses again. Knocked out of bounds by Mars, and will stay with Grinnell. Mauer now is playing right in the middle of that. They put their point guard in, make, make him a playmaker in there. Two different ways to do it. One puts a big in there, one puts a little in there, both effective. Also seems like Grinnell's looking for the Jack Taylor of the future. The two freshmen, <laughs> Parker and Marks, have been filling that role today. That's Julian Marks. Levin trying to slap it back in. A steal underneath the basket by Nick Curta. And two points for Maher. It's crazy. One day Marks goes 8 for 12 from the three-point line, then he struggles the next day. It's, it's a crazy game. A timeout. Mike Worrell stops the clock with 10.47 remaining. As these two teams battle here today in Jacksonville, it's Illinois College with the lead, 90-87 over Grinnell. And then Barry on the ball taken away, and now Grinnell runs. Jack Taylor goes to the hoop with the left hand, gets it to fall. Attacking that basket. He's just not a three-point shooter. He can tack off that bounce. A foul against Parker. He bumped Blake Stills. You know, Cole Wynn, Wynn talked a whole lot about Kohler today, but when, when, he, when he is out of the game, their rhythm is not as good. Now, my man Cole has got nine assists. Stills Reed, the senior. It's one, he earns another. Stills Reed. Intends to be an athletic trainer when he's done with school. At this level, these are all student athletes. That's why it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun to see those kids over there yelling and screaming for each other. A lot of fun seeing them before the game. Each coach talking to the other team. This is a great level of basketball. No one and done players here. It's a pure level. This is what college athletics is supposed to be about. 
Jack Taylor doesn't mind taking that long ball and the rebound put back from Tate Zachary. Everybody gets standing watching Taylor defensively and, and you can give up an offensive board. You forget to box out, you're sitting there watching uh, Taylor do his thing. Great pass. Chris Mars on the last end of five different passes. Great work by IC. Taylor goes inside, doesn't do that too often, lost the ball, and it's against Illinois College. Grinnell will keep it. They ruled it out of bounds against Campbell. Watch Illinois College move that ball. Wing, high post, bang. All you got to do is get the ball to the high post. You can play two on one. That was a two on one. They played three on two. You just got to get that ball to the high post. They've done a great job, really well coached. Maher will inbound. Zones helped them. I feel like they should be up by 10 or 12. <laughs> zones helped, they're up three. But the zone has helped them. 11 for the tie, it's short. And Grinnell gets another chance. They do a great job on the boards. Long shots, different rebounds. Taking their time, another three for Aaron Levin. Another miss, and this time the rebound for Zeke Light. Did you hear what you just said? You said taking their time. That's what the zone has done to them. It slowed them up a little bit. Light goes strong. He gets fouled. And Light will go to the free throw line. Nick Curta is bewildered. He's called for the foul. Once again, Kohler's not getting, he doesn't get an assist for that. He's not getting credit, but he gets in that daggum game. <laughs> It, and everything slows down for Illinois College. He is a phenomenal point guard. White misses the free throw. He'll get another. Already nine team fouls against Grinnell in the second half, so it's double bonus the rest of the way. Each foul will result in two free throws. For a team that shoots the ball well for the free throw line, despite two misses there. Fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. They got to battle it. They got to fight it. Grinnell gets ready. You see the. The new four or five getting ready to check in. Went back man. If the zone's been working, why the change? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'll tell you this, Grinnell didn't really figure it out and shot one 17 seconds uh, on the shot clock. Levin with a miss on that hook shot. Mixing and matching is never a bad thing. A late decision to pass there by Light probably should have taken the shot. And Chris Urban gets called for a foul. Light looks dusted. That's a good sub right there by Coach, getting him out. Let's see what they go back here. Five new ones for Grinnell. Have you ever in your coaching career put five new people in at once? Well, yeah, when, when you're mad. <laughs> not, not, not when you're happy, when you're mad. I, you know, every coach has done that. Another miss from three-point range, but Grinnell gets another rebound. Zachary puts it right back up, misses, long and shot. another long rebound. Long miss, long shot, long rebound. Parker finally gets it to drop, and it's 94-94. That's their game. That's their game. They don't get discouraged. That's their game. Kohler goes all the way, but can't finish. Now Grinnell looking for the lead. Jaeger, the floater. And the Pioneers lead, 96-94. Brandon Berry, the jumper from the free throw line. Irvin missed on the follow through and a foul call. It will be Grinnell basketball after a timeout. The rope and rope finally working for the Pioneers. They have taken the lead, and they're up by a bucket. Stuff is even exhausting to watch. <laughs> 7.35 left, and both teams already near 100. I don't know how she could be uh, asleep. Uh, what a crazy, I mean, it's a very interesting game. Um, I, I thought coming up here, you, you just don't know. Everybody says, is it a gimmick offense? Is it? Let me just tell you something. It is based on sound fundamentals and very difficult, as you can look at the score, very difficult to defend, very hard to play. That's John Schulman, the former head coach at UT Chattanooga. 
And Wayne Randazzo at Jacksonville, Illinois, Illinois College. After a missed free throw by Jack Taylor, it's IC basketball. Nathan Kohler sets up another rebound and two points for Brandon Barry. 32 and 11 for Barry in this game. You tell me. 96 96, a timeout by Illinois College. Yeah, once again, I mean, Barry does a great job. Refused to get boxed out. Weak side rebound uh, for two. I mean, they is, you know, but I'm just going to tell you. Coming out of that timeout, you got Taylor at the foul line. Well, what is Taylor from, from the free throw line? Uh, he's two for five from the foul line. He's got to come in there. They're up two. They go up four. You have no idea what that does mentally. And now all of a sudden, a coach does a nice job. It's a tie basketball game called a quick timeout. Let's see if they don't try something new defensively here. Coach, you've coached at the Division One level, the highest level of college basketball. You went to the NCAA tournament twice. Could this style work up there? Could, could you ever see something like this and, and actually see it develop into something that wins at the D1 level? People are doing this right now. They just don't, not maybe as crazy. What we hear as normal people, what we hear is Jack Taylor staying on one end defensively and scoring 138 points. I don't see anything crazy out here. I see two well-coached basketball teams and remember what Coach Arsenal talked about. He wants his kids to have fun. Boy, isn't that a shame? <laughs> Maher was fouled, and I think they gave him the bucket. They did. Maher fouled by Stells Reed on his way to the basket. Illinois College goes back to plays man, and like I said, within the rules now, playing one on one. That's a crafty veteran right there. That's a crash. It's a 6 6 point guard. He's got length, got size. Uh, you're out there on an island guarding him one on one. Uh, it's really difficult. You saw the new rules coming to bite there as there wasn't much contact, but enough to draw a whistle. Freedom of movement. I would have already gotten 12 technicals. Stells Reed ties it again. Yeah. Right back to even here in Jacksonville. 99-99. Big answer. Huge answer. And another foul. Stells Reed frustrated. He's gotten called for two in the last 30 seconds. And actually they'll call this an offensive foul against Maher. First foul against Maher. He couldn't believe it. Call. 6.47 remaining, a tie game between these two conference rivals, the opener of the Midwest Conference. With the left hand, it's Blake Stelsreed putting Illinois College back on top. Did a great job. Campbell did a great job of splitting the double and then going and attacking on a 2 on one situation. Not settling for a three, going and attacking. It's been a while since we've seen Taylor chuck one up. But he gets that one to fall, and Grinnell goes up 102-101. Remember, it's been a while because they went and played that zone, and they could guard him with two people. Now they get back playing man-to-man. -man. It's a little bit easier for him to kind of get his shot in rhythm. What an impressive effort we've seen from both teams today. Farville misses the three. Kohler fights for the rebound. Mars lost it, but Varville scoops it up, and I see resets. Spin move, Justin Smith. Big time play up there. Barry is getting his last, uh, his last little air. Taylor, too strong. Rebound loose for about five seconds, and finally Illinois College grabs it. Kohler pushes, gets two. Big time play. He's a big time player. All conference. Guy. He's got to will his team right here. It's got to be his game. It buries when he gets back in the game. Taylor's right. blocked by Justin Smith. Far 
Carville airballs the three. That could have been a dagger. <laughs> could have been a dagger. We all felt it in here. Now it's Parker. Rebound, Illinois College. Back and forth inside of five minutes to play. How do they have enough steam to do this? Well, Barry's doing a nice job sitting on the bench right now. Oh, he's getting up the layup. Justin Smith come in and done a really nice job. Done a really nice job for Barry. Made a couple big time plays. Mike Worrell needed a deep breath, so he called a timeout. With 4.48 to play, Illinois College has a three point lead, but you see the clock, four minutes, 48 seconds, and I see down to just one timeout now. Well, I mean, he's, he's had to do it. He, you gotta do what you gotta do. And, and he's got another media timeout coming up. He's got Barry getting his last blow right here before game time here at the end. Justin Smith's done a nice job coming in. Kohler's had his breaks. And I mean, it, this is, I tell you one thing, it's a big time basketball game. Conference game in November is 105-102 with 448 to play. I don't know if we could ask for more. Some of the football players here, that's Kurt Fritchman leading the blue crew and an overflow crowd here at the Sherman Gymnasium. Remember what Coach Arsenal talked about. He talked about entertaining. He said, I'm not sure if we can win today, but we're going to be entertaining. <laughs> and let me just tell you something. That's entertaining. That's why you've got a packed house in here, because it is entertaining. It is fun to watch. He gets a lot of criticism because of how they play. I didn't. I haven't seen anything wrong with how they play. The kids are having fun. They're playing hard. Uh, they, shot, they shot a lot of threes. So be it. Everybody in the country does. And this isn't a record-setting event we're trying to see from Grinnell and, and Jack Taylor. They saved that for some of the lesser opponents. We've seen a very hard-fought conference battle today. But what do you make of some of the negative media that they've received? Well, I, you got to be comfortable in who you are, and they are comfortable playing this way. And uh, to, to, to tell you the truth, no one wants to play against them. So I don't know what the big deal is. Shot clock down to six. I think that's the first time we've seen it in single digits today as Illinois College on a 7-0 run leads by five. Shot clock operators had a very easy day today. No controversy. Maher around yeah. Farville plus the foul. You talk about a bonus, having a 6-6 six, six point guard. <laughs> you can go post up, that can, has, a, uh, has enough get by speed, can make a three. He is a bear of a matchup. Ninth team foul against Illinois College. Third against Farville. Once again, senior. Seniors got to take over. Seniors understand conference games. Those rest of those young guys, they don't understand. They have no idea what this really means because they haven't been to a march in a, in a, a postseason tournament. Seniors have. Smith tucked the ball like it was a football. Couldn't get it to go with the left hand. Now Grinnell tries to tie, and Maher does it. Taking over the game. The senior, Patrick Maher. 18 points. Look who's not in for Illinois. Kohler, got to get Kohler back in the game. Zeke White, and Illinois College leads again by three. Under four to play. <laughs> Answer, Patrick Maher. They must see those four letters up there at ESPN and say, hey, let's, we're going to put on a show out here. It's been entertaining on both ends today. That's exactly what you got to do. And Chris Myers gives Illinois like College the lead again. And you got Barry and Kohler out right now getting their last blow. A bump and a foul called against Barville. That'll be his fourth. And a timeout on the floor to let these two teams breathe before they sprint to the finish line. 3.08 to play, and it's 112-110 IC. These teams in the triple digits with 3.08 to play. They've gone back and forth the majority of this second half. They've scored almost as many points this half as they did in the first. Wow. And Patrick Myers at the free throw line to try to tie this game. It's game time now. You got Kohler back in, you got Barry back in, you got all of them back in. Jack Taylor's in there too for Grinnell. Maher hasn't missed a free throw all season. There's Taylor. Wait, why you do that to him again, man? Come on, <laughs> come on, big boy. Come on, senior, step up. <laughs> Taylor's sitting on 27 points. He's taking 17 threes today. Uh, watch this, man. He gonna fight the jinx. Watch this. He's a tough guy, he's a senior. Come on, man, I told you. 
Bounces in for Maher, and it's even again. 55 threes that Grinnell's taken. Doesn't seem like that, but that's who they are. That's their identity. And about 60% of their shots from three-point range. Brandon Barry stops and pops, misses. Tough Evan shot. Johnson gets the rebound. Good shot, tough shot. Final minutes here, it's a tie game. Do things change at all for Grinnell? No, they're not, shoot, are you kidding me? That's not how they play. Uh, Cole is doing a nice job keeping that ball away from Taylor. Jaeger gets fouled. The closest game Grinnell had last year was their 106-102 win in this building a year ago. Don't think those old guys don't remember that too. It's important knowing that you can win in there. And it's, it's old guy time right here. You know, Jaeger's a junior. Jaeger kind of carried them last year when Taylor got hurt. So he's used to this. Mauer's getting his last blow before it's over. That foul against Barry is the fifth. So Brandon Barry will exit this game. Wow. That's going to hurt in a, in a major league way. But I mean, what he's done, 32 and 11, it's pretty good, pretty good afternoon. And he just he turns into a cheerleader. They only had him at three fouls. And the stat sheet we were given during the timeout, score must have missed one, or at least the stat keeper must have missed one. Because he needs to get with A-Rod and see if he can't well, get an arbitration. <laughs> get that foul back. I don't know how, how well that's going to work for Alex. <laughs> Either one of them. That one off the foot of Kohler and out of bounds. Defensive stop by Grinnell. And now Illinois College with Brandon Barry on the bench, who's been their leader today. They're going to have to find a way to step up. It's survival. It's will. Find a will. Will your way to get the conference win. But once again, the trap just wears you down. It may not do it early. It wears you down late. Unforced turnover, really. The only guy on the floor who doesn't look tired is Jack Taylor. He fights for that rebound after his own miss. Another offensive board. They've got enough on this second half. Jaeger along three. Grinnell has a four-point lead. Believe it or not, it's their biggest today. It doesn't last long. Chris Mars gets two right back. Taylor made a great play, penetrating pitch. They just did a poor job getting back on D, but once again, that's not who they are. Taylor, Grinnell by five. To be Grinnell, you got to outscore them because they're going to put up numbers. Taylor is an amazing, amazing player. And in crunch time, Jack Taylor is starting to light it up. Zeke Light misses. Kohler fights for the rebound but can't hang on to it. Talk about major league danger zone here. A scoop from Jaeger and Grinnell starting to put it away. Luke Jaeger gives the Pioneers a seven-point lead with a minute 33 to play. Wow. Remember now, you know, it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting. Up seven with a minute and a half to play. How, it, how they change a little bit. And they need to change a little bit here to win the basketball game. But you got attacking, attacking, attacking that rim. And, and you put the D in a jam. That's a speed dribble right there. Speed dribble and go make a play. More subs coming in. More fresh guys coming in. Taylor was in. He checked himself back in. That means that means two Taylors are in the game at the same time. Mike Worrell, even the cardboard cutout version of him, looks upset about what happened with Grinnell in this last couple of minutes. A five nothing run, and they've opened up their biggest lead today. Well, Grinnell, I, they, they play and they play and they play, and you're in great shape. You know, basketball is a game of runs. And, and for the last, what, 45 seconds to a minute, they may have won the basketball game with a 45-second run. That's it. And they wear on you, and they wear on you. And then all of a sudden, you got a tired, you got a tired light taking a, a tough three over here in the corner, and then all of a sudden, it's a four-point game. It comes a seven-point game, and then all of a sudden, it's minute 33, you're down seven. And how quickly it changed after Brandon Barry's fifth foul. Yeah, and Justin Smith got put in a tough spot right there. He's a good basketball player, uh, but but Barry is having a career day, 32 and 11, and sitting over on the bench. Still time, especially against Grinnell, it's still time. Blue boys have the ball down seven. Zoning and not trapping, very interesting. 
How about that? And a steal from Jaeger. Pushes it up to Maher, who gets run down by Smith. And Maher will go to the free throw line, but Grinnell, in these final minutes, when it came down to trying to win a basketball game, they've done things a little different. Yeah, there's a, there's a, if people don't think there's a method to his madness, they're, they're wrong. Uh, they're not just out there scrambling and trapping. They came back in up seven, came out and played a two, three zone, which I probably no one ever thought they had and did a nice job and got a stop. And he Palmer. did a nice job by not jinxing Maurer at the <laughs> foul line. But has he not stepped up? He's been a big-time player. He stepped up and made big-time plays. Maher has 26 points. <laughs> it, it's a sad day when you got 26 and you're not your leading scorer because another guy has dominated the play. He's the fourth leading scorer today. <laughs> Still time. Still time. It's an eight-point lead. Seek Light cuts it to six. Illinois College uses their last timeout with 106 to go, a 30-second timeout for the Blue Boys, who are trying to avoid their first loss of the year. But Grinnell down 17 at one point today. They have come back strong late in this one. Illinois College, they don't have you don't have to have threes. As you just saw right there, you can take that ball to the basket. Under a minute to go, the clock's gonna stop on all made baskets. So go attack, attack, attack. It's going to be interesting, uh, you know, trying to get a trap. You still got time. You don't have to foul immediately. If you trap and don't foul, will Grinnell come down and chuck it, or are they going to hold the basketball and, and try to win the basketball game? And this is, you know, and I talked to the young Coach Arsenal yesterday, not that the old one, that's the old one right there we'll watch on TV. But, but Junior said, you know, we don't get in these situations a lot. And, We'll see, we'll see how this thing goes right there. But they're not, uh, Illinois College doesn't have to panic. They don't have to quick foul. Let's get a trap and let's see if we can get a steal. David Arsenault Sr., author of two books based on his system. The Running Game, written in 1997, and System Successes that another... came out in August. Maher gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Did you pick up a copy of System Successes? I'm going to after the game. <laughs> He actually he said he dedicated a book to an old buddy of mine who passed away, Bob Johnson, who's the head coach of Emory Henry, who was a stickler to play very solid. And he changed him and went from, he said he went to the dark side and, and started playing fast. <laughs> Maher has helped Grinnell ice this one in the final minutes. He's been strong at the free throw line as you see the author and head coach of this Grinnell system. Uh, let me just tell you something. There's no, nobody else he'd rather have at the foul line right now than a senior point guard who's been through the wars, and he has played for now. Come up huge in the last seven or eight minutes of this basketball game. 18 national scoring titles in the last 20 years for Grinnell. I've got 124 today. Mars forces up the three that couldn't fall. Smith lays it down on the putback. Now you, you're in foul situation right there. He walked there. Jaeger almost lost the ball twice, but somehow kept his dribble, and he's finally fouled. Taylor got away with the walk earlier. Tough to see he's in the trap. He does, you know, listen, they got Jaeger, they got Taylor, you got Maurer, you got three really experienced good guards out on that floor. That's the coach and you, always looking for that <laughs> violation that wasn't called. <laughs> no officials ever missed a call, ever. <laughs> you just asked him. <laughs> Jack Taylor, not a record-setting day for him, but... He's still the leader of this squad. He's the leading scorer today. And what's most important to Grinnell coming out of here with yeah. a conference win. And listen, talking to him, he almost feels guilty being at one and scoring 138 points. He is thrilled to death to get out of here with a conference road win. He was like, he's just the chosen man. He's the chosen one that gets us to get the record book. And he'll take this uh, road, road win, road conference win. Barville couldn't get that one to go down. Shot clock is off. Nathan Kohler drains a three. Illinois College not giving up hope yet. 23 and two tenths remaining. And they've cut it down to five. I didn't know they had another timeout left. I'll tell you, well, you're the home team. I guess you get to you get to be a seven or eight. And 
Get another 30 seconds, evidently, and the Blue Boys try to discuss how to keep this one yeah, continuing. Co Coach has done a great job. He's done a great job. They attacked early. I mean, you know, you got 121 points on the board, and you're down by five. This is not a normal situation. This is very, you know, we used to have to play teams that ran the Princeton offense. Those were very unique games. This one right here is a very unique game that, that you prepare for twice a year. And, um, you know, but give credit, give credit to Coach Arsenal and, and Grinnell. It's, it's a very different style. Everybody has to prepare for them. They don't have to prepare for anybody. And Coach Morrell at Illinois College, they won't go on playing this way. They're going to go back to scoring very few points in comparison to this. Luke Yeager was left all alone. These guys can coach. These guys can coach. Kohler. And it's a four-point game. It's not over yet. Yeah, Kohler made two big threes. All-conference guy, just a, maybe a little too late. Rennell calls Hanging in there, out. though. Hanging in there. Yep. Hanging in there. 128, 124. It's like an NBA game from the 80s, these two teams going up <laughs> into big triple-digit numbers. They just got to get, you know, Grinnell's got to get that ball in bounds. Maurer better find a way to come get that ball. Taylor's kind of struggled at the foul line. Maurer's got to come get that ball, and, and very simple. I mean, Eleanor College has got a quick foul. And they need, they need a little luck at this point. It's a two-possession game, but it's going to remain a two-possession game. If they foul and they, you make two, it's still going to be a two-possession game. So you still got a shot. Love the fact that, listen, man, these kids are battling their tail ends off. Ain't nobody left the building. You got the blue, you, know, you got the blue crew over there. You got the football guy. He may play before it's all said and done. One last look at the blue crew trying to help the blue boys come back. Jaeger gets fouled. And now Grinnell will have to hit some free throws. Jaeger, 67% from the free throw line this year will be his first chance today. You put you put Jaeger, you put Jaeger at the foul line. Remember, he's been through the wars. All that changes, changes in the last two minutes of a game. Junior out of Westport, Connecticut. Most of the Grinnell players, despite the college being in Iowa, most of the players are from Illinois. There's also a few from other states. Only two players on the team that are actually from Iowa, Cody Olson and Stuart Howe. Like we said, still a two-possession game. That didn't matter. You just got to get up a three quickly. It's in the hands of Nathan Kohler. A miss. A putback keeps it a four-point game, and Jaeger will go back to the free-throw line with four seconds left. Uh, they, they should feel pretty good about life at this moment. Coming on the road in this kind of environment. 130 points. <laughs> Illinois College, they can't. Listen, they got a shot at doing something special. They got old guys. They got seniors. They got Barry was phenomenal. Barry doesn't foul out of this basketball game. It's probably a different result up there. Grinnell's very good. Illinois College very good. Both going to have really shot to play postseason basketball. St. Norbert has won the Midwest Conference three of the last four seasons. So both of these teams will be trying to challenge St. Norbert. As they move through this season, still a lot of non-conference games left for both of these teams. They played this conference battle early. As time runs out, Grinnell survives on the road. They defeat Illinois College 132-126. All smiles for the Arsenos. And, John, this was everything we thought it would be more. Well, what is crazy, crazy style 132 126 both teams uh, both teams played phenomenal uh, grinnell's got to feel great coming out of here with the early season road conference win and you know at christmas time they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves illinois college cannot be down they played a heck of a basketball game there's an overflow crowd here today at the sherman gymnasium in jacksonville and what a performance from both teams with a very dressed up crowd in attendance Three-pointers raining on both sides. For John Schulman, 
I'm Wayne Randazzo saying so long from Jacksonville, Illinois. The final score, Grinnell wins 132-126. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. ESPN.